B'Shem Hashem Na'aseh V'Natzeach. We wanted to give a Dvar Torah on the Parsha of Mas'eh. It's a double Parsha this week. And I wanted to dedicate this for the Neshama of my dear grandmother that has your side, her your side is tonight, Pari Bat Iov Sultan. May her Neshama have Aliyah. The end of the Torah on Mas'eh says, Lo Tachnifu Ta'aretz. We shouldn't flatter the land. And the Sifri, the holy Midrash written by the Rashbi says, Harezu Azharalachanfim. This is a warning and a prohibition to people that flatter others, flatter sinners. So basically, if somebody murders a Jew in a fellow Jew in cold blood, he needs to be put to the death penalty or prison or whatever. He does not have the authority and permission to go into the cities of refuge. So this is actually counted as the 55th mitzvah of the Torah. Just like it's a mitzvah to put tefillin, Rabbi Eliezer Mimintz, the great Rishon, Ashkenazi Rishon, according to his accountment of the 613 commandment, the, six, the 55th commandment is that one should not flatter a sinner. What does it mean, flattery? Basically, this is not talked about so much, and it's unfortunately in Iranian culture, where I come from, they have this tendency to flatter one another. Oh, you're so great. Well, guess what? If the guy is not such a great person, is a sinner, and he does a lot of terrible stuff, then if there's a, if there's a terrible consequences for such people. Why? Because we should reprimand, provide reproof, and chastise, and bring back a sinner to the right way. Not say he's the greatest guy on earth. And that's why the Gemara says whoever has this tendency of flattering a sinner, in the end he's going to end up in exile. He's going to have to leave his home and leave the Holy Land. And these are the four people that don't, will not merit. Even if they get into heaven, they will not merit to see the light of the face of the Shekhinah. One of them is a person that flatters, lies, says Lashon Hara, and always is ridiculing, making fun of everything. And it was scary when I saw this in the Yalkut Lekach Tov, he brings down from the Chavetz Chaim, that God forbid, it's so easy to be guilty of this in Lashon Hara. We're just a few days away from the nine days and from Tisha B'Av. And we know the Chavetz Chaim says that one is obligated to sacrifice so much of his honor and prestige and put himself even to danger and not to be guilty of flattery of applauding and giving tribute to a sinner. And where is this a classical example? When somebody comes to you and says Lashon Hara or Rechilut about another person. So if you're able, you should reprimand the person, provide reproof, and tell him, why are you talking behind somebody's back and doing character assassination. But the Chafetz Chaim writes, all too often if the person saying the Lashon Hara is powerful and rich and famous and you need a favor from him, not only do you not reprimand him and say, or at least say you don't want to hear his nonsense and the Lashon Hara which is responsible for destroying us, our temple and Sinat Chinam and for us and the Shekhinah to become kavyachal homeless. Not only do you not do that, but you shake your head and add your two cents of Lashon Hara and say, yeah, this Mr. Reuben is so terrible, you're right. Why don't you, why do you participating and applauding and giving tribute to this sinner that's saying Lashon Hara because you want a favor from him? This is a terrible, terrible mistake. And I just wanted to share with you an amazing, amazing story with the 
founder of the Brisker dynasty, one of the grandchildren of Rav Chaim Velazhner was Yashav Ber Salavechik, the original one, the Bet Halevi. He was the father of Rav Chaim Ibrisk. So it says that when he was in the city of Sklotsk, the, one of the rich Erev Rav people of the city invited him to a bar mitzvah. This person owned half the city. But the Bet HaLevi asked, I'm so excited to come to your son's bar mitzvah, but I was just wondering, what Devar Torah is he going to give? What Torah speech is he going to give at the bar mitzvah? He said, you know, times have changed. My son is not going to say any Dvar Torah. So the Bet HaLevi, which was fearless, and this is the ultimate reason why God... One of the reasons the temple was destroyed was this in Agrifas, that the rabbis did not chastise the leader, the king, that wanted to repent and um, give up his kingship, but rather the rabbi said, it's okay, you're our brother. The reason why flattery is so bad is because we're, instead of telling sinners to stop sinning, we give them tribute and applause them and support them. So Rabbi the Beis HaLevi said very frankly, any bar mitzvah that does not, the bar mitzvah boy does not say Dvar Torah is a moshav letzim, which means it's a place where King David says we shouldn't step foot in. It's a place of mockery and nonsense. So guess what? Instead, the Bet HaLevi went to the bar mitzvah of one of the poor people. And this Erev Rav rich person basically, since he owned half the stores and all the shopping centers in this, that city, he, he, he chased out the Rav Yosef Dov, the Bet HaLevi, from the city. And it's, it's so, so important that in these times, here in California, unfortunately, the synagogues got closed again. We have to repent. And one of the repenting is, with love and patience, we should help each other improve. And at least, if we see somebody sitting, we shouldn't pat him on the back and give him tribute. That's something that is one of the four worst sinful categories that Hashem should shave, save us from. And the practical example of this is, I love it when we get a practical example that we could incorporate in our lives on a daily basis. The Chavetz Chaim says, when somebody tells you Lashon Hara, don't encourage him and add your two cents. Rather, either stop listening, run, change the subject, or run away. But when you... Add your two cents just to get favor. That's the worst of the worst. And we should stop doing that. Have a wonderful Shabbat and enjoy.